right, guys, let's do this. Ask the resistance. Our first question comes from VMP at Vinny underscore Vegas. I can't say he got his handle, but uh, that's kind of cool. Vegas, um, baby. This first one is uh, is aimed at me and uh, or I'll at least be answering it. Uh, and Vinny Vegas said, do you think we have too many plot doors open in the universe? Not enough answers for characters in movies and TV shows. And uh, for me, I, I do we think we have too many plot doors. I, I think yes, but the word too many implies that it's beyond our level of comfort. Um, and I think that it, it always there should always be plot holes or, or doors, you know, open to the universe. I think that's where Star Wars has always thrived in the sense of like an off the cuff comment that's like, I'm never going back there again after what happened last time. <laughs> and then the fans will read into that and they want to know that story. And um, I think that after a, a long amount of time passes where we don't tell those stories and we don't go into those threads, it provides new flourishing theories on what those things could be or pick out what they think uh, fans really want to know. Like, oh, we threw this off the cuff comment on it and hardly anybody ever talks about it. But this off the cuff comment, people are always speculating on that. So that's the story we need to tell. Um, so I think all these little open doors and uh, uh, things um, are, are are good for Star Wars. And and one other thing too is like I, the fan service aspect of it. When like things are are problems and what do they call that? Um, uh, re- when it's like retro activated uh, ret- retcon, right? <laughs> yeah. So to me, retcon is never, ever, 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 ever a bad thing. I think that it's, Boo. it's part of, I know you say that, but I, it's, it's part of the story that we haven't heard yet. So if I, you know, if I told you one element of a story and you pictured something in your head and then I told you another element of the story and you're like, oh, okay, so it wasn't really what I was picturing. Now I get a greater picture of the whole, it, it's not it's not my fault for doing that. It's your fault for picturing it the way that it is. But I, so I don't James, know. Anyway. You mean like, like Ahsoka running a deli during the events of revenge of the Sith. I know. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to have this star Wars war one day, I swear. <laughs> but, uh, no, like, I mean, but that, but that's a good example of like these characters that where were they during this time? And that doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make sense yet. But when they tell the story, they'll tell it and it will make sense. It will fit in and you might not like it, but that's the way that it happened in the because galaxy. Because they have to. Because, yeah, because I don't know that because that's, yeah, it has to, they don't have to, it has to, it has to, because that's the way that it happened in the story. <laughs> so let's move on to the next one. That's a, that's a, that's a, it's own little side teaser with a big, <laughs> open door. Um, <laughs> our next question is, uh, Benjamin Thompson at crystal of truth. That sounds very, hmm. uh, secret of mana. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, John, I'm going to give this one to you, but I'll ask you what Benjamin wanted to know. Could episode nine have a dark ending? If the stories are to rhyme, will they go darker? Like in episode three, could Ray join Kylo? Uh, I don't think so, Benjamin. Um, I, I think it's important that this trilogy ends with um, a happy ending resolution um, to an extent. Um, I know Lacey will say that means that Ben Solo has to be redeemed because it needs to be a happy ending. I disagree. Um, Revenge of the Sith ended dark because we already knew four through six existed. So it, they, it you know, we had something leading up to a pre-existing story. Um, we don't know that yet for anything beyond episode nine. Um, Lucasfilm might, maybe they already have 10 through 12 in the works for 10 years from now. Um, but as far as JJ and his production and his writing for this thing, he has to kind of put a bow on this thing. And he's even alluded to the fact that he wants to tie the entire saga together. One through nine. I can't see it ending on a dark note, uh, to be short with you there. And I really can't see Ray joining Kylo. I think uh, I've personally beaten this uh, over the head. Um, 
like a dead horse. I, I think that opportunity was there for her and she clearly made the choice to go the way of the Jedi. And, um, I don't think they're going to flip back on that. Um, so could it have a dark ending? Yes. Do I think it will? Not at all, man. Um, I think it's going to be way more Endor and a return of the Jedi than end of revenge of the Sith. And I agree with that. Uh, slouchy at slouchy two way to get your second handle, man. Maybe he's also slouchy one and he uses that for other stuff. That's what I'm thinking is like when he doesn't want to be associated, he's like a sports guy and a star Wars guy. Mm. So slouchy is like a very famous, like, he writes into questions for like ESPN and sports center and stuff, but slouchy too, like writes in for like star Trek, star Wars, doctor who stuff. Like when they're on all this podcast. So but, maybe he has a sports slash star Wars podcast. <laughs> yeah. There's also slouchy three, but you don't want to see the stuff that he's tweeting. You on don't want to know. What slouchy <laughs> you, three don't, you don't want to know. <laughs> I've seen slouchy three. It's rough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, but Sachi wanted to know, uh, what's your best cinematic Star Wars experience of all time? Mine will forever be seeing Maul's double-bladed lightsaber activate for the first time. Best childhood moment. Uh, John, do you have one off the cuff? Or, uh... Well, I know you're going to be mad at this first part of my answer. Um, my first... The, I you two... shut it. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> wait, I'll wait. I have two two answers to this. The first has to be being at the world premiere of The Last Jedi. You um, shut it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was something I'll never forget. Um, but in, in addition to that, in terms of like a single on screen moment, like remembering experiencing it for the first time, it has to be Ray um, climbing the steps uh, on Octo in her quest to find Luke with John Williams Jedi Steps theme. Um, that scene was legitimately the first star Wars scene to make me like cry or get like emotional and I'll never forget it. So that's, um, in terms of an actual star Wars moment on screen that I would consider my, you know, most memorable or favorite experience. It has to be that one there. And, um, I will also give a quick nod to, I remember seeing the uh, special editions of the original trilogy come back in 97. And that was a great experience too. For me, I've, I've talked about a, a, a story before on the podcast where I went to, um, I convinced my brother to go see the midnight showing of Revenge of the Sith oh, yeah. um, because it was the last chance that we would ever get to see a Star Wars movie at a midnight release, which is kind of funny now. Um, <clears throat> um, that will, will probably always be just like a um, specific memory that I'll always have. But it's funny because like, I don't really remember like, specific moments in the movie, like any reveals or anything like that. Like all the original trilogy and the prequels and stuff are all blur to me. Like, I don't, I don't know. I must have a bad memory. So I'm going to go to the more recent stuff. Um, like I really, really, really loved seeing Maul in Han Solo. And I really, yeah. And I really, really, really also loved, um, I, I, I remember sitting in the theater when Kylo walks up to Luke and puts the lightsaber through him. And it just like, it blew my mind. Like at that moment, I'll I'll be honest with, with everybody. I came out of that movie thinking this, this could be the best star Wars movie that's ever been made. Like, (laughs) and I, and I was totally blown away when people didn't think that because I, my feelings on that moment, it was, my mind was so blown like that, that reveal happened. And it's, it's crazy to me because I'll never be able to get that back. And every mm-hmm. time I see that scene, I know that he's really not there. But that first time I watched it, I, I don't know. It's just so amazing to see him go and your brain is trying to like put together what is happening. And then mm-hmm. boom, they cut to him on uh, the island and you're just, uh, I, I, our whole audience lost it, man. Cause we were, we were like a, a six thirty like fan showing. So we were like the absolute earliest you could see it. And I mean, uh, besides press and stuff, but yeah, I saw it way before it, that. Yeah. Sh- 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 <laughs> you shut up. <laughs> no, but I imagine it's the same thing though. Like all of your audience would did the same thing. Like how the heck are they going to explain this? I have no clue what's happening right now. And then mm-hmm. cut to the Island. So, uh, for me personally, like I think it's those, uh, 
those moments right right off the top for me. Oh, and the the lightsaber in Force Awakens, like we talked about it earlier on this podcast, flies past Kylo and everybody's yeah. thinking it's Luke Skywalker and boom, it falls in the hands of Ray. And I, it, that's a bittersweet moment for me because I think everybody's like, oh, darn it. But then I don't know, for some reason, it just makes so much sense that it, that it would be her and that the moment starts to sink in a little bit more. So, um, but, but I always remember that because I think everybody thought it was going to be Luke. <laughs> James, I do have an update for you. Um, there is no slouchy one or slouchy three. But what, what was I looking at then? But, the, <laughs> but there is a <laughs> slouchy, but they haven't tweeted in six years. So Twitter should purge them and get rid of them. That's a good point. That's probably the only reason that Slouchy 2 is who he is. He's mm-hmm. like, man, I, I, I really want that Slouchy handle, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to compromise and go with Slouchy 2. He checks every, like, get every first Monday of the month. He's like, maybe it's available. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dang it. Good I've question, tried though. tweeting him. I've tried tweeting him to see if he'll get rid of Slouchy, if he'll delete his profile. Nothing. But nope. Hmm. Or hand me the, over the password. You're not using it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks for watching that video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and head over to the full episode by clicking this box here. If you want, you can subscribe. And that way you get all the weekly news. You get our discussions. You get uh, information on our giveaways whenever we do them. It's a good time. We promise. Thanks for watching the Resistance broadcast.